Elizabeth of Austria was born in 1830 into one of the most influential European royal families. But, contrary to what we might imagine, she had an odd and sad life, marked by several personal tragedies, political turmoil, and her assassination. Elizabeth of Austria, known by the nickname Sisi, was christened with the name Elizabeth Amalie Eugenie. She was born on December the 24th, 1830, in Munich, Bavaria. She was the fourth daughter of Duke Maximilian Joseph of Bavaria and Princess Ludovica of Bavaria. Maximilian was considered quite peculiar. He had a childhood fondness for circuses and traveled the Bavarian hinterlands to escape obligations. Cece and her siblings grew up in a very unrestrained and unstructured environment. She often skipped school to wander the countryside. Elizabeth was also known to have an extremely slender build and a long neck. This became one of her most striking physical traits. In addition to her height and slender frame, Elizabeth was also known for her blue eyes and dark hair, which she often wore in loose curls or braids. As a member of the Bavarian royal family, she had access to the best that money could buy. She was educated by private teachers and a governess to take care of her. In addition, she took dance and music lessons and learned to speak French, Italian, and English. Elizabeth was a shy and introverted child who preferred the company of animals to that of people. She loved nature. She often spent hours exploring the forests and gardens near her home. One of Elizabeth's favorite hobbies was horseback riding. She took up this activity when she was only six years old. She quickly became an accomplished equestrian. She would often go on long rides alone, disappearing for hours on some occasions. Cece spent her time riding and exploring the grounds of the family estate. As a child, she preferred to play with boys rather than girls. This preference would remain throughout her life. Elizabeth was also a relatively private person. Although she grew up as a public figure, she was known to be quite shy and introverted. As a young girl, she never enjoyed public duties, which included balls and talking to strangers. In fact, she would get so nervous at these events that she wouldn't even eat. But she was known to be quite stubborn. She would often disobey her housekeeper or guardians. Once, she ran away from home after an argument with her housekeeper. She was found a few hours later, hiding in a barn on the family's property. Elizabeth's relationship with her family was quite strained. She was known to be quite headstrong and independent, which did not always fit with her father's more traditional values. Elizabeth also had a strained relationship with her aunt Sophie of Bavaria, who would become her mother-in-law. The two were known for their frequent conflicts, something probably justified by their widely different personalities. Sophia was a traditional and conservative woman. Elizabeth was more liberal and independent. In other words, the two did not always agree, which often led to arguments between them. Despite everything, Elizabeth remained close to her family. She was known to be extremely attached to her father. She often wrote him long letters when he was away from home. She was also remarkably close to her sister, Helena, although they did not always get along. Elizabeth's idyllic childhood ended in 1853, when she left family life to become Empress of Austria. In 1853, Princess Sophia of Bavaria, mother of the 23-year-old Emperor Franz Josef, preferred to have a niece as her daughter-in-law rather than a stranger. She arranged the marriage between her son and Helena, the eldest daughter of her sister Ludovica. Although the couple had never met before, Francis's obedience was considered natural by the Archduchess, once described as the only man in Hofburg for his authoritative profile. Cece's mother and sister Helen were invited to travel to the resort of Bad Ischel in Upper Austria to be presented with the formal marriage proposal. Cece, aged 15, accompanied her mother and sister on the journey between Munich and the resort. They arrived late. Cece's mother, prone to migraines, interrupted the trip, and, to make matters worse, the carriage carrying the gala dresses did not arrive in time for the meeting where Franz Josef would ask for Helena's hand in marriage. The family was still mourning the death of an aunt. They were dressed in black, 
and could not change into more suitable clothes until they met the young emperor. Although black did not suit 18-year-old Helena, it heightened her younger sister's beauty, and Emperor Franz Josef noticed this. Helena was a pious and quiet young woman. She and Francis did not feel at ease in each other's company. However, he was immediately infatuated with her younger sister. He did not propose marriage to Helena, but informed his mother that, if he could not have Elizabeth, he would not marry. Five years later, the engagement was officially announced. The couple entered marriage eight months later in Vienna, at Vienna's Augustinian Cathedral, on April the 24th, 1854. The marriage was celebrated three days later. The shy Bavarian princess had a tough time getting used to life in the Austrian Imperial Palace. Sisi loathed the obligations as Queen of Hungary and Empress of Austria. Elizabeth was focused on her looks, working hard to keep herself beautiful. Even though she was vehemently against photographs of herself, her life was devoted to aesthetics. She owned several gym equipment, she did not accept any weight gain and treasured her slender body, as well as her long hair, which she took care of for three hours every day. She didn't use makeup, but several facial oils. One of her beautifying rituals was to sleep with a piece of raw meat and crushed strawberries on her face. She also soaked her pajamas in vinegar to preserve her slim waistline. Elizabeth was remarkably high. Even after three births, she maintained her weight at approximately 50 kilograms for the rest of her life. She managed this thanks to fasting and exercises such as gymnastics and horseback riding. Whenever her weight threatened to exceed 50 kilograms, she would do a fasting cure or starvation cure, which required almost all-out fasting. Often, meat caused her disgust. On these occasions, she would squeeze the juice from half-cooked steaks into a shallow soup or follow a diet of milk and eggs. The Empress developed extremely strict and disciplined exercise habits. Each castle she inhabited was equipped with a gymnasium. Treadmills and balance beams were installed in her room to train every morning. She began practicing fencing at age 50 with equal discipline. An ardent horsewoman, she rode every day for hours on end, becoming probably the best and well-known female equestrian of the time. When, due to sciatica, she could no longer endure hours in the saddle, she replaced this activity with walking, subjecting her attendants to endless marches at any hour of the day. Elizabeth's marriage was not a happy one. Franz Josef was a cold and distant husband, who often neglected her. On top of this, there were rumors that he had affairs with other women. As a result, Elizabeth often sought comfort in the arms of other men. She had several affairs during her marriage. After enjoying an informal and unstructured childhood, Elizabeth, shy and introverted by nature, and even more so amidst the stifling formality of Habsburg court life, had difficulty adjusting to the Viennese court and the strict protocols and etiquette. Within weeks, Elizabeth began to exhibit health issues. She had coughing fits and became anxious and frightened whenever she had to descend a steep, narrow staircase. She was surprised to discover that she was pregnant. She gave birth to her first child, a daughter, the Archduchess Sophie of Austria, 1855 to 1857, just 10 months after their marriage. Her mother-in-law, Archduchess Sophie of Bavaria, who often referred to Sisi as a silly young mother, not only chose the name's child without consulting the mother, but took complete control of the baby, not allowing Elizabeth to breastfeed or care for her daughter. A year later, when her second daughter, Archduchess Gazella of Austria, 1856-1932, was born, the Archduchess also took the baby away from Sisi. The fact that she had not begotten a male heir made Elizabeth increasingly unwelcome in the palace. Sophie took on the mission of raising Cece's children. She was known to be domineering and manipulative, constantly supervising her son's family, even preventing Cece from having contact with the children. But things between the two got even worse in 1857. That year, during a trip to Hungary, little Sophie, age two, died of an illness probably typhus. The grandmother used the tragic episode to sever her relationship with her daughter-in-law even further. Her second daughter, Gazella, was estranged from her mother. The child had a life stamped by extreme discipline, 
while Sisi was strongly censored. Since they desired a male heir to the throne, Elizabeth and Francis became obsessed with this goal. After some time, the first male heir was finally born, Rudolf. Sisi collapsed soon after Rudolf's birth. As a result of this bout, the doctors advised her to move to a tropical climate. She went to Madeira, a Portuguese territory in the Atlantic. After six months on the island, Sisi realized how nice it was to live away from Vienna. She began to travel and ignore the responsibilities of the Austrian monarchy. She became aware of the world beyond her borders, even focusing her political efforts on the Hungarian situation. As time passed, Sisi felt increasingly unhappy. She withdrew from public life, becoming increasingly dissatisfied with her life. Franz Josef was a cold and distant husband who was always traveling on business. Elizabeth felt isolated and lonely in her marriage. She also began to suffer from depression and insomnia. But Franz Josef loved her wife. There were many records to prove this. He was devastated by her death in 1898. In fact, he never recovered from Elizabeth's murder and never remarried. The death of their only male child was frightfully negative for the couple. Rudolf grew as a progressive. He disliked the court lifestyle, similarly to his mother. Because of family pressures, he tried to develop his personal qualities to be king, but quickly got fed up with that life. In 1883, the heir married a Belgian noblewoman. The marriage resulted in the birth of a daughter, but marriage out of duty left him disgruntled. He hated the noble lifestyle in Austria. He even tried to annul his marriage, but was stopped. Consequently, Rudolf's life became marked by adultery and alcohol. It did not last long. He was found dead, together with a mistress, on January the 30th, 1889, in a hunting lodge in Meyerling. Rudolf's suicide is consensually accepted, but the main motive is still disputed. Was it pressure from his father regarding the marriage, depression, or general despair? Immediately next to Rudolf's corpse was the body of 17-year-old Maria Vetsera. She was lying lifeless, pale, with a bullet in her head. Daughter of Baron Albin von Vetsera, a diplomat at the Austrian court, the young Baroness was the Crown Prince's mistress. Sisi and Franz Josef were devastated. Rudolf was their male child. The chief of police was summoned and Maria Vetsera's body was buried without inquiry and in secret. Not even the mother was allowed to attend the ceremony. Rudolf and Maria's death became known as the Meyerling Incident. It was shrouded in several versions and theories. Elizabeth's life was shortened when she was murdered in 1898 by the anarchist Luigi Luceni. The 25-year-old Italian stabbed Elizabeth in her heart while she was walking on a Geneva street with her lady-in-waiting. Elizabeth died a few hours later in a nearby hotel. She was 62 years old. Luigi Luceni was arrested and later sentenced to life in prison. The motive for the attack? He was angry with the Austrian government and wanted to kill a member of the royal family in retaliation. The consequences of this attack spread around the world. Elizabeth's murder caused a scandal in Austria and weakened the Austrian monarchy. Millions of people in the world mourn Elizabeth's death. She was buried in a simple tomb in Vienna. However, her body was later moved to Hungary, where she now rests beside her husband and son. Elizabeth's life was tragic, filled with heartache and tragedy. However, she was also a strong and resilient woman who managed to overcome the many challenges she faced. Elizabeth will be remembered as a gentle soul who left this world too soon. Despite her tragic life, Elizabeth left a legacy. She set trends and popularized the Gibson girl look in the late 19th century. She was also known for her charity work. She donated large sums of money to charity and helped fund the construction of hospitals and orphanages. Moreover, Elizabeth was an advocate for women's rights. She campaigned for better working conditions for women and helped establish several women's organizations. She was also recognized as one of the most beautiful women of the 19th century. Her style and beauty inspired countless fashion designers. Her story continues to captivate people to this day. Elizabeth fell victim to circumstances. Born into a powerful family, 
and married to a man she did not love. On the one hand, she faced her hardships with dignity and grace, becoming an inspiration to many who knew her.